This is Twit. I'm Patrick Norton, joined as always by Mr. Ryan Shrout, who is contemplating the joys of Xeon scalable processors and actual price and ship dates for the AMD Ryzen Threadripper. Sorry, I like saying Threadripper. It's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah. It it it, it implies ass kicking and name taking. It's gonna rip through those threads. Um, yes, yes, it's a very aggressive would, naming scheme. Well, you know, this is a very aggressive move by. I mean, look. So IMZ Ryzen. Red Ripper, 1950X, 1920X. Um, you know, you're talking about a uh, 3.5 gigahertz, 12 core, the 1920X for $799. The 16 core, 3.4 gigahertz, 1950X costing uh, $999, both turbo up to 4 gigahertz. You know, this is what I would affectionately call aggressive pricing. Um, <laughs> it is, <laughs> At least yeah. compared to the option which would be uh an intel processor um yep. so it's it's the first time that we've seen the model numbers so 1950 1920 uh it's for some we've seen clock speeds uh we know power draw now is 180 watts and pricing's probably yeah probably that most that most important data point the um so the the way and we kind of i kind of assumed this was going to happen right so intel announced its skylake x family of products right. first uh, and they, even before they launched the processors, they put out all the SKU listings and pricing. They left some of the clock speeds off, but they, you know, we knew the 18 core part was going to be 1999, and its 16 core part is going to be 1699. Um, and that gave AMD plenty of opportunity to, you know, guesstimate the Intel performance and then mm -hmm. measure their own set clock speeds accordingly and set prices accordingly. So if you look at the 999 price point, which the 1950X, the brand new Threadripper 1950X will ship at, um, you're looking at 16 cores running at somewhere between 3.4 and 4.0, probably sustained. You're looking at 3.6 gigahertz or so on that mm -hmm. clock speed, uh, just based on how Ryzen has done in the past. The $999 part from Intel is their 10 core part, the Core i9 7900X. So, you know, for the for the same dollar amount, you're going from 10 cores to 16 cores. And then mm -hmm. uh, in terms of clock speeds, you're getting anywhere from, you know, 100 megahertz slower on the base clock to 300 megahertz faster on the turbo clock for Intel parts. So this basically tells us, you know, we don't have reviews live today. We only got one performance metric. It was all multi-threaded, but I assume... Single threaded performance will still show dominance to uh, Intel, right? They have higher IPC and they're going to be able to right. get higher clock rates out of their part in single threaded and lightly threaded applications. Uh, but when you go into those multi threaded things, multi threaded tests, it's going to be a significant difference. Uh, if you look at that Cinebench score uh, graph that I put in the story, um, that the two green bars are the numbers provided by AMD in today's information release. So we didn't run these numbers. Let's make sure we're clear about that. Uh, but the 7900X from Intel, the Core i9, is beat by 12% against AMD's 12 core part and by 39 to 40% by its 16 core part. So these are not, you know, insignificant mm -hmm. deltas of performance, especially if you look at the, the score of 3000 versus the score of 2100 are price competitive solutions. Um, that puts yeah, Intel a, in a, in know, a really it, tight spot. Well, you know, it, it, as a consumer, it's a great spot to have Intel yes. put in, right? You're looking at a 50% sure. boost in performance, again, on massively threaded applications uh, for the same price. That makes it a really easy decision. Um, you know, it, it, you could also, you know, point out um, there are less expensive options, I think, for running the Threadripper than, say, X299 motherboards. Uh, not to harp on the whole uh, uh, cost <laughs> of sure. running the top of the line uh, Intel uh, Intel CPUs, which, you know. No, it's super fair. I, yeah, I mean, well, I look at, I think about the X99 launch. I look at the X299 launch. Um you know, and, and part of what's really frustrating about that is, is, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. I love a motherboard where somebody spent a lot of time looking at comic book drawings and figuring out weird things to put over the covers, you know, all of the various and sundry parts of the motherboard. And, you know, I do love having massive amounts of, uh, uh, you know, IO options and stuff, but there's moments when I'm looking at some of the motherboard options and I'm like, you know, I'd take a, you know, I'd, I'd take a $150 motherboard 
that didn't have a whole bunch of this stuff on there that nobody actually needs if they're primarily, you know, doing work tasks or productivity based tasks on this. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I just, the, you know, the cost in those motherboards were brutal. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't up, you know, upgrade to a, an X99 based system last year. So it's like, um, no, no, I'm not going to take a marginal, you know, a moderate increase in performance and spend, you know, a thousand dollars on a processor and 350 bucks on a motherboard, <laughs> you know, sure. and then you're looking at this and it's like a thousand dollar processor, you know, uh, giving you 50% more work than the competitive thousand dollar processor. And then you've got a whole array of motherboard options, um, which makes me kind of happy or at least makes the cheap stingy part of me incredibly happy. We, we, but it, we don't yet know the cost of the platform for Threadripper yet. Mm -hmm. I, the That's X399 true. chipset I'm, I'm is a new chipset. That, and I, 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 I mean, the processor is going to be a better value for AMD. I actually kind of think that the motherboard prices will be equivalent. Just guessing. Okay. But if you look at actual build cost, you know, you still have this enormous socket bigger than the one for uh, right. LGA 2066 for Skylake X. Um, you know, there's tons of PCIe lanes on this processor, 64 lanes of PCIe. So there's... Which is awesome. You, you would think these motherboard guys are going to find ways to fill that uh, capacity with accessories and add-ons and features and capability. Um, so I, you know, I'm thinking like $250 for a motherboard for Threadripper is going to be probably right. I, I, I put in some questions to some of the motherboard guys to see kind of what they what they might say about it. Um, it's also good if you look at the next table down, actually, that shows all of the Ryzen lineup as it stands today, uh, leaving out the Ryzen 3s that were announced as well. It's important also note, this is technically called the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X and Ryzen Threadripper 1920X, as if we needed another couple of syllables to go with it. Um, but so we start at 16 and then 12 and then 8, 6, 4, uh, and the Ryzen 3 parts are three are, are 4 core, 4 thread. It's interesting because uh, we were having discussions here today about you know, there's, there's a pretty good gap between the 1920X and the 1800X in terms of price, mm -hmm. you know, 799 to 499 uh, Interesting that AMD chose to not, at least yet, announce or release or talk about a, a part that can fit between that, you know, maybe a 10-core processor. Um, I don't know if that is a <clears throat> limitation of, you know, how much production they can get in or if there were, uh, you know... It's, it was hard to find a part that could be priced between there that that right. showed enough of a difference from either of the uh, abutting processors to to warrant the extra part. Um, but it's been interesting. It looks like there is some wiggle room there between the 1920X and the 1800X to, uh, uh, to, to maybe squeeze in another part if they wanted to, I mean, you know, kind of go after, um, you know, a 10-core part at 599 or 699, how much better or worse performance would it be uh, compared to the eight core Skylake X right. that Intel did aggressively price at 599, which actually might explain why they didn't do it because they would have to price it accordingly, um, maybe too close to the 1800X uh, because of the because of what what Intel did was able to do or did do, I guess. And and then speaking of Intel, it does, you know, the the their 16 core part is going to be $700 more expensive than the AMD 16 core part, which is, that's a lot of money. Sig that's significant. That is, that is a high amount uh, of variance there. And you know, it'll be better. It'll be a faster part. Like it will, like uh, the, the, the clock seeds will probably be higher and the IPC will probably be higher or will definitely be higher. So we assume it will be more expensive, but how much more for 700 bucks is, is definitely worth you know, keeping in mind for me, if you are, if you are a, you know, prosumer type person, which I kind of don't like that term, but if you're like a heavy, heavy multitasker, you do video editing on the mm -hmm. side or photo editing, or, um, you do production, um, and, and, but you're not, you don't work at a, at a studio that's spending $8,000 on your workstation for you. Um, <coughs> thread, thread ripper looks like, uh, like a kick-ass part for that, right? Like this is, your, it's not a budget, but your budget flagship part, right? This is this is what Extreme Editions at nine ninety nine kind of used to be, but they didn't have any competition. They were just competing against themselves. Uh, Intel was just always going against their own products. So it, it you know, it, Intel did adjust pricing, but they didn't adjust it a whole bunch. So that left some some room for for AMD to make this part, and hopefully this allows them to be 
uh, you know, make a little bit of margin on these parts for the for this audience that really needs it, and continue to use that mm -hmm. money to develop and improve on Zen two, Zen three, and everything down the line.